friends, my name is Jamie and I have a fun and a little bit messy craft for you today. I thought that since it's summer now and it's the perfect time to lay out on your lawn at night and look at the stars, it would be just the right time for us to do this craft project. This week we are doing splatter paint, constellations, and solar systems. Aren't those cool? So you can either do one or the other, or you could combine them and make it just one project. So I'm going to show you what we're gonna need for this project. Kind of need um, quite a few things for this um, craft today, but hopefully you have most of these things in your house already. So I have paper plates. This is just to put paint on, so you could use anything really. Um, and then I have watercolor paints. I have a pair of scissors, a pencil, um, a small paintbrush that you can splatter your paint with, a silver marker. If you don't have a silver marker, you could use the white paint that I'm going to show you in a second. We have, I have two kinds of paint here. I have white paint and I have a light blue. You could just use one or the other. You could use just white. Um, I just picked light blue too because I wanted to make slightly different colors in my sky. Then I have Q-tips. These are optional. You don't have to use them. You could use a paintbrush or a white marker or a white crayon or something like that. I also have, this is just um, so I can make circles on my paper. We're going to be making planets with these circles. So um, I just got a couple of different things that are circular shaped so that we could trace them and make um, slightly better circles. I might just freehand some of the circles too. Um, and then I have water, a little cup of water, not for drinking. This is for um, putting our paintbrush in when we are doing watercolors so we can take one color off and get ready to add another color. I also have newspaper because this is a messy project, but you could also do this outside because it's nice weather now and it's a great time to get outside anyway. So you could do your project outside and you wouldn't need to put anything down on, on the ground um, to keep things clean. And then the last thing I have, because I think I've told you before, I'm very, very messy. Um, I have an apron because I'm wearing a dress today. Um, you could also wear maybe like a t-shirt you don't really care about that much or, you know, just a piece of clothing, something over your clothes just to try to keep them clean. Um, we are going to be splattering paint, so it does tend to go sometimes where you don't plan for it to go. So we are going to get set up with all of our materials ready to go and we're going to start our project. Okay, so we are all set up to start with the splatter paint part of our project. So we are going to start by adding just a little bit of water to our paint. You can see I've got white paint here and blue paint here. So we're going to just take, just take the, this end, the, um, the plastic end of the paintbrush. I'm just kind of dipping it in the water and then putting a few drops in my paint just to kind of water it down just a little bit. I'm going to do that to the white paint too. Just add a little bit of water because it makes it easier to splatter. Okay, and then I'm just going to mix that up a little bit. See, it's just kind of goopy. Just a little bit more watery. And then I'm going to, I brought um, a wet paper towel. So I'm just wiping that off. And then I'm going to stir my blue paint a little bit to make that a little more wet and easy to splatter as well. And I forgot to tell you, and a very important part of our project um, supplies that we need, and that is paper. So we have black paper and white paper. That's all you need. One, one piece of black paper and one piece of white paper. All right, so to start splattering, we're just going to dip our paintbrush. We'll start with the white. We're going to dip it in the white, and then we're just going to splatter. So we're doing that by tapping the paintbrush. Can you see the little splatters that are starting to happen on the paper here? Tapping, and sometimes a little line will hop in, and that's okay. Just kind of makes it unique, right? Tapping, tapping, tapping. You can see I'm kind of tapping it from the side. You could do it from the top too. You can do it whatever way works best for you. But I'm gonna do a few more taps, and then I'm gonna switch to my blue paint. 
paint. Put my brush in the blue paint, and I'm gonna do the same thing, just do some blue stars. These are gonna be the stars in our night sky. Doesn't that come out really cool? This is why I said outside is a good place to do this because um, it can get a little messy and that's why I have the, the newspaper down here because not all of the splatters are going on the paper. Some of them are going on the newspaper instead of the construction paper. So we'll do a few more white ones and then we're gonna be done with this part and we can move on to the next part. And there we go, there's our night sky. Okay, so now we get to paint our planets. So the first thing I'm doing is making circles so that our planets can be circular. So I'm just tracing, I've already done five, I'm just tracing little items that have circles on the bottoms so that um, I can make almost perfect circles. So I'm just gonna do one more. I'm just gonna do six planets for this craft today, even though there are not six planets. Right now, there are nine planets, but that, actually, I think there are only eight planets right now. It keeps changing, and when I was a kid, there were nine planets, but I think now there are only technically eight planets. So, now that we've got our planets drawn, we get to do the fun part, which is to paint them with the color, um, with the um, watercolors. <laughs> so, I am going to grab my water here and get my paintbrush, paintbrush wet and then I'm going to pick a color and just start painting. So I'm going to start with purple and maybe just paint the outside of this one purple. Watercolors are so much fun because you don't really know what it's going to end up looking like. I've noticed that it even looks different, the paints even look different from when you start to when, you know, they dry and you get a whole different hue. So I'm gonna do, just start with some purple, get lighter and lighter, and then I'm gonna switch over, you know, wash my paintbrush a little bit to get the purple off of it, and then I'm going to move to blue. And we'll do some light blue here do a couple of lines. So we're just going to keep painting until we have all these planets painted so we can put them on our star background and make a solar system. Okay, now that we have our planets painted, we're going to let them dry. I painted with watercolor, so there's a lot of water involved and it's going to need to dry off. The fun thing about these planets is that you can make them whatever color you want, whatever color combination you want. I did make one that looked kind of like Earth, but the rest of them I just kind of painted however I felt like painting them. So your solar system can be very unique. So we're going to put that off to the side to dry. And then we're going to do a constellation. So when I showed you my original projects, one of them was a constellation like this. I wrote the word summer. And then the other one was just the planets, just my own little solar system. So this time, you could do either of those. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. But I thought this time I would do a combination of the two. So I'm going to start by making my name in a constellation, which is actually really easy. You're just going to write your name. So I am going to write a J. I'm making my letters pointy and not exactly perfect because they wouldn't be perfect in a constellation, right? They'd be kind of kind of pointy and a little bit, maybe a little bit diagonal. Um, that's the fun of constellations. You have to kind of guess what it is, right? So I wrote my name just a little bit, a little bit pointy and a little bit off kilter, not exactly straight. Then I'm gonna take my Q-tip I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of paint and then I'm just gonna make a dot at each end of a line in my name. You don't have to do your name. You could do your pet's name or you could do um, your favorite word. I'm gonna do one at the ends of the line that goes through the middle of the A too. Everywhere something new connects, we're gonna do a dot. Um, 
I'm gonna do this and then I think I'm gonna hang it up at my desk at work. So I think that would be a fun, would be a fun nameplate or something like that for your bedroom door. All kinds of fun things you could do with this. So we're gonna make our eye here with the little dots. And then we're going to make our E. Isn't that fun? If you don't have a silver marker or a white marker, you could use paint, the same white paint that we're using here. And there we go, all done. Now it's time to add our planets. Um, all right, the last thing I'm gonna do is glue down my planets. So this is a fun step. I already put them kind of where I thought they would look good to me. So I'm just gonna glue each one with a little glue stick, which I also forgot you would be a, forgot to tell you would be a supply that would be good to have. Um, you can use any kind of glue that would just stick down these planets, but my glue stick is gonna work well for me with paper. And I'm just gonna glue them all down. You want to make sure that these watercolor planets are nice and dry before you do this though so that none of the colors get messed up so there we go just gluing down the last two there we go and here's our last great big planet and you can put these on the table when you're gluing them too that works better probably than the way i'm doing it here and then I'm just going to put that in the corner down there. And there we go. All done. A little solar system of my own. Thank you so much for doing this craft with me. I really love this one because I feel like you can make it your own. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can make it exactly how you want. And there are so many different things you can do with it. If you do make one of our crafts, we would love to see a picture of it. So you can always email it to us or send it on Facebook and we would love to see it. So today I just wanted to share a few books with you that have something to do with our craft. So I have some books here on the solar system and astronomy and space. So the first one I have is called The North Star. It's not exactly about space. It's about a little boy who is going on a journey and learning some things about himself. And he sees the night sky and he learns that his night sky is different from other people's night skies and the stars he sees he sees in a different way than other people might see them. So he learns that everybody's different and that that's okay. This is a really nice story. The North Star by Peter Reynolds. The next book I have to show you is a book that's full of infographics. Infographics share information about a topic in um, a fun way that's kind of easy to understand for people. Sometimes information is hard to understand and these just make it a little bit easier. So for instance, this book has a section on the planets and it explains the size of the planets as if they were fruit. So you can see there's Jupiter, which is the largest planet. And if it was a fruit, it would be a watermelon. And then you can see the other planets here. See how they're all these different fruits or different circles. And we've got Neptune, which is about the size of a lime compared to the watermelon of Jupiter. And then Saturn, which would be about the size of a grapefruit. And then tiny, tiny little Mercury over here, which would be the size of a peppercorn, which is so small compared to the giant watermelon of Jupiter. So infographics are just a fun way to learn about a new subject. This book is full of lots of other information about space, um, constellations. It's very cool and the cover is so bright and fun. I love those colors. That one is called Information Graphics Space. Uh, the next book I have is a biography and it's about Galileo Galilei who was born in 1564 which is a really long time ago but he was an astronomer and he mapped the night sky and he did it during a time where people did not necessarily believe what he was saying and he got into a lot of trouble for um, mapping the night sky and showing people where the stars and constellations were and he found some of the planets at a time when we didn't have all these strong telescopes that you could see things like that with. So um, he was definitely um, an innovator and gave us some great knowledge um, that we still use today. So that's called 
Starry Messenger. It's by Peter Seiss, and um, it's a very cool book. The last book I have to share with you is A Child's Introduction to the Night Sky. And this book is just full of information about constellations and the night sky, space, the planets, astronomers, um, the zodiac signs, which have to do with constellations. And it's just a very cool book if you have interests in space and everything that goes along with it. So if you want to check any of these books out, we would love to share them with you. You can give the library a call and we would love to put them outside for you. Hopefully we'll be opening our doors soon and um, we can see you in person. And until then, we will be sharing crafts this way. Also, we will be starting our summer reading crafts very soon. So those may be coming up online on a different day, but we're excited to share some new crafts with you. So I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.